Hi YouTube, Darth here. This is Yes or No, a weapon review series where I give a clear and concise answer as to what weapons you should be using in Battlefield 4. By request, today's weapon is the F-2000 Assault Rifle. This futuristic looking weapon was one of my favorites in Battlefield 3 and it was released in Battlefield 4 as part of the second Assault DLC. So how does it play in Battlefield 4? Should you be using the F-2000? Yes or no? Yes, and this is the second bullpup assault rifle I've given a positive review on this series. The bullpup F-2000 carves itself a solid niche in the assault rifle category between the more controllable AUG A3 and the bullet hose FAMAS. The F-2000 definitely has a number of defining characteristics that make it play differently from those bullpups and it stands out from the standard assault rifles. So let's outline what's good about the F-2000. At 850 rounds per minute, the F-2000 is on the high side of the 800 round per minute sweet spot. Much higher and you're talking about relegating a weapon to being primarily viable only in close quarters. The lower you go, the more controllable a weapon gets in exchange for damage output, but I'd consider the F-2000 at 850 rounds per minute to be a nice compromise between the two. With a minimum time to kill of 284 milliseconds, the F-2000 is the fourth fastest killing assault rifle in the game and certainly capable of hanging with the dedicated close quarters rifles. Like most all 5.56mm assault rifles, it maintains its 5 bullets to kill out to 40 meters. This means the F-2000 has a nice damage edge over the slower firing weapons. Like the rest of the bullpups, the F-2000 gains a bonus to moving fire. Both hip fire and aiming down sights while on the move produce less spread per shot than non-bullpup rifles. For this benefit, the weapon takes a hit in standing spread, but nothing too serious. And because it's a bullpup, the F-2000 has some great hip fire, particularly when paired with the laser, which I'll get to later. Another benefit is that the F-2000 starts with a custom 1.5x scope, which is probably not what I would use on this weapon once I had unlocked the standard scopes. But the 1.5x is a good deal better than most of the horrible iron sights in BF4. Despite all of those positives, the F-2000 isn't some kind of wonder weapon, and it does have its fair share of detractions. Some of these are endemic to all bullpups, but let's get to the list of negatives. At 2.7 seconds for the bullet and chamber reload and 3.9 seconds for the totally empty reload speed, the F-2000 is pretty well tied with the FAMAS for the worst reload times in the assault rifles. However, unlike the FAMAS, you spend far less time reloading because of the slower rate of fire. I would normally dock a weapon harder for such a terrible reload speed, but the F-2000 isn't exclusively limited to close quarters and doesn't suffer like other bullpups to which I've said no. The spread per shot of the F-2000 increases at a rate of 0.111 degrees per shot which is the fourth highest among the assault rifles but isn't so impossible to control again because of the slightly lower rate of fire. The recovery rate is also somewhat poor at 8.6 degrees per second. Translation, don't hose and expect to hit anything at range, and long firefights are not your friend. There's a number of recoil stats on the F-2000 that are not too great. First, the first shot recoil is a hefty 2.4 times multiplier, putting it just behind the FAMAS and AEK for a jump on that first shot. Next, the left-right deviation is .375 and .275 respectively. Again, behind the FAMAS and AEK in terms of deviation, but the F-2000 is more controllable than those weapons. Combined with the spread, this means that your weapon is going to need some careful shooting. But that's pretty much it. The worst of the F-2000 is really only because it's a bullpup. Bullpups tend to suffer from poor reload speeds and penalties to aim fire, at least in Battlefield 4. As I said earlier, the F-2000 lives in a very nice 850 rounds per minute sweet spot that very few other weapons in the game occupy. The reload speed is obnoxiously long, but it can be dealt with. Normally, I'm not a fan of extreme reload times on non-support weapons. Unlike the A91, the F-2000 does well at range and doesn't go through ammo as fast or become as uncontrollable as the FAMAS. The F-2000 doesn't have the extreme control problems of the fast CQB weapons, but it also isn't as easily handled as the M416 and other mid-range assault rifles. With nothing attached, the F-2000 has a .32 upwards recoil, .375 left, and .275 right. This translates to a bullet pattern that is going to take the weapon roughly up and to the left. With that burdensome left-right deviation though, things are going to start looking pretty ugly by the top of the funnel. Controlling the F-2000, you'll need to pull in the opposite direction, down and to the the right. The longer you fire this weapon, the more spread is going to impact your accuracy. It's also going to be difficult to keep your shots on target even while controlling the recoil. To get the maximum effect out of this weapon, you'll want to fire it in 5-6 to six round bursts. The downtime between bursts will let some of that spread bleed off, but keep in mind that the high first shot recoil multiplier will also bite you. That means the F-2000 is not so great for sustained firefights against more than two enemies, but it will get the job done in a lot of different engagements. 
So the things you're going to have to keep in mind when using the F2000 are its limitations. Primarily the poor reload times and that it's not great in fights with lots of enemies. Partly because of that reload and also because it has a high spread and first shot recoil multiplier. So first, covering your reloads is going to be vital with the F2000. Rushing while reloading, something I particularly like to do because normally I run ultra fast reloaders, is definitely not advised with the F2000. Step behind cover for your reloads before emerging again. Next, you'll want to keep at least a round in the chamber as it will shave more than a full second off your reload. 2.7 seconds versus 3.9 is a huge difference and you don't want to get caught in the full reload when another enemy comes around the corner. While staying out of overly large engagements is sometimes hard to avoid, fighting more than two enemies one after another is not the strength of the F2000. Be prepared to have your secondary on speed dial in these cases, and I'd recommend something that is particularly good at short range like the G18 or Shorty. Because it's a bullpup, you'll want to get in the hang of hip-firing this weapon at close range and only using aim down sights for longer range engagements. I usually cut the difference at about 10 to 15 meters. Enemies closer than that get the hip-fire, anybody further gets the sights. Because of the spread and recoil, you'll have to work harder with bursting the further out the enemies get. The F2000 does particularly well on maps with lots of infantry traffic and mid-range engagements. Some examples include Zavod, Metro, Guilin Peaks, among others. I'd probably find something else for very large maps or stick to the infantry-centric areas, for example the center on Dragon Valley. Ultimately, the F2000 is a pretty versatile weapon and is great in many circumstances. I think one of the most interesting aspects of the F2000 is that it adapts very well to a wide range of attachments. Looking at the top players on BF4Stats.com, they seem to have preferred the red dot sights, no accessory, heavy barrel, and angled grip, presumably to counteract some of that first shot recoil multiplier with the angled grip. And I've tried a number of setups with this weapon that are all relatively viable. I had given my Battlefield 3 vertical grip setup a go first, tried the community one second, I went the silencer route, did some research, and then finally settled on what seems to be the best. For the optic, I ended up preferring the Coyote sight. It's hard to go wrong with the Coyote, and I think that if DICE makes another game with optics customization, making the optics a more interesting choice would probably be worth considering. The Coyote has the best visibility, and for a weapon that duos as both a CQB threat and a relatively acceptable mid-range rifle, it's not a bad pairing. I think the RDS is also an acceptable choice for the F2000. It's all about preference, but the Coyote is going to provide the least obstructed view. Accessory is a no-brainer. Again, another slot that could use more variety as I always seem to be using the laser sight on my weapons. I can turn it off, and I can turn it on as necessary in CQB. The laser is a very nice pairing with the F2000 because of the bullpup bonus to hipfire. The only other viable option appears to be attaching nothing, and I feel like a bit of a broken record here because why would you leave the laser behind when you can just turn it off? For the barrel, if this weapon fired any faster, I might think about a compensator, but because it's in the 850 sweet spot, I'm going to recommend the heavy barrel. This will also help to fight the spread of the weapon and serves to really dial in that medium range power that makes this weapon stick out compared to other CQB style bullpups. As I said earlier, the silencer is a plausible pairing on this weapon, but savages the mid range capability. Finally, for the underbarrel attachment, I'd recommend the stubby grip or the potato. Your choice, it's the same function. Combined with the heavy barrel, and given this weapon's rate of fire, the two are going to keep that spread under control for a nice balanced weapon. Hip fire in close range, and enjoy the power of the stubby and heavy barrel at mid range, particularly on a weapon that fires 850 rounds per minute. Just watch out for that first shot recoil. So I've had a couple of similar bullpups on yes or no that I've passed on. The MTAR-21, FAMAS, and the A91 come to mind. All of these weapons had detractions that the F2000 does not. The MTAR-21 and A91 both suffer under the carbine damage model, and the FAMAS is good, but not good for public consumption because of its high skill requirement. The F2000 doesn't suffer from the carbine damage model and is forgiving in ways that the FAMAS is not. The F2000 is not particularly amazing at any one thing, but does many things well. It definitely succeeds on maps with a lot of infantry traffic and is a definite yes. If you find yourself liking the Bullpup F2000, you could go faster and pick up the FAMAS. The FAMAS can shred enemies like none other, but requires an enormous amount of discipline to use. You could also slow things down and go with the L85A2. The L85A2 is a very solid mid-range rifle that rivals the M416 as one of my two favorite all-rounder weapons. If bullpups aren't your style, you could also try the Ace-23, which punches roughly in the same weight class with almost no drawbacks. 
That's it for this episode of Yes or No. If there's something you think I missed, or if you have a different take on the F-2000, please let me know in the comments below. If there's a particular weapon you'd like to see reviewed on this series, leave a comment below indicating which weapon. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.